I'm working in uh, trying to find pharmacological treatments uh, for tinnitus. That means uh, drugs that help that will, can help tinnitus patients. And this is very very challenging since we know that tinnitus is uh, is not one disorder but probably different disorders with different uh, underlying pathological uh, mechanisms. So there's no way that one drug will fit all patients, but probably there are some drugs that can help some patients. So, so what we are doing in the Tinnitus Research Initiative uh, Pharma Workgroup is uh, as a first approach, looking uh, at drugs that are prescribed for different indications and use them off-label in tinnitus patients. So since these drugs are already approved, uh, in some countries you can use them off-label to treat tinnitus patients. And we have found a subset of, of compounds that help a subset of, uh, of patients. This, of course, is not a universal but um, at least it is promising. On the other hand, we're looking for new target uh, molecules that we can find as the basis for developing or finding drugs that can help tinnitus patients. Well, the challenges in, in, in working, finding a, a cure for tinnitus uh, patients is, is really big, not only in pharmacological treatments, but other treatments. And uh, probably the the biggest challenge in in pharma development is that we don't have um, a preclinical test that we can use to find a drug. So you need a preclinical to try in animal models to in cell in, in in cell tissue culture, for example, for the development of drugs. And that is not the case for tinnitus. The available uh, animal models do not really reproduce all the spectrum of tinnitus symptoms because tinnitus is accompanied by uh, depression, um, sleep uh, uh, disturbances or anxieties. So the lack of these animal models to do preclinical studies is, is really a challenge. And you don't also don't have a, a known target for tinnitus for the development of drugs. So this is really challenging. And that is why I think that most uh, pharma industries are not jumping in the, into the tinnitus field because although they acknowledge that the, the, um, the benefit for if they find a drug for tinnitus would be huge because there's 20% of the population that has tinnitus and probably 1% of the population that suffers from tinnitus. So there's a huge market for, uh, for pharma development. They find it very risky to get into the field. And that is really... Uh, a backdraw in tinnitus, both because we don't find the, uh, they don't invest money in research and development, and they don't support basic research so that can we can move the the field forward. Well, I think that with the with the starting of the tinnitus research initiative almost probably fifteen years ago now, the collaboration between different fields and different ideas, different countries, different minds uh, has increased enormously. So uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, it, there were little, small little places where in, people were working in tinnitus and they, they were just nurturing their own ideas. But with this tinnitus research initiative and the, the strength of, of the tinnitus research initiative has been to uh, bring people together with different minds. So I think that that step we have, we have, uh, we have become over the step already and, and collaboration is, is, is not an issue. We collaborate. We don't compete in the tinnitus field, I think. I see it this way.